In the past few years, I have had the opportunity of attending a couple of job interviews. I look back at the journey and realize I may have made some mistakes during some of those interviews. It's my opinion that mistakes are important and to be embraced since they have within them the potential to teach us so much more. Hence, in today's video, I'll share some mistakes I or some other people have made so you could learn from them and be successful in your data analyst or data science interviews. My name is Peter Okoye. Welcome to my channel. Number one, be structured. The first and perhaps most common mistake that I see people make, and I've made this mistake too in the past, is not having structured answers for interview questions. First response for most people is to just give out an answer that is on the top of their mind. It's important to think about the response and answer using a technique called STAR strategy. STAR stands for situation, task, action, results, and reflection. So anytime the interviewer asks you a question, use these five elements to give a better answer. It says here on your CV that you were able to help your previous employer make profits of over 5% within the first three months when you started working with them. Could you walk me through the process that you used? Thank you very much for that question. Um, when I joined the company, it was at the point where she had just invested in an e-commerce platform. The challenge we were facing at that time was we had a lot of people coming on the sites, making attempts to purchase, but never putting through to checkouts. And this became very huge because we had over 75% failed transactions. So we had people coming on the site and about 75% of them would not pull through to a sale. So what I had to do immediately was I had to quickly find out why was this happening? And so I designed a few questionnaires and reached out to some of the people that had made attempts on the sites to purchase. And I tried to find out why they were not pulling through to checkouts. Based on the information that has been gathered, we had to now reduce the, ch the, the steps to checkout. We had to also consider bundling products because from our service, it was seen that bundling products will help people make purchases. And the third thing that was noticed was that people lacked enough confidence to put in their cards on the platform to actually make these purchases. And so what we did was we made it a lot easier for people to trust the site by providing payment gateways that they were more used to. And the result of this was that we had more people moving on to checkouts. We had more people trusting the site with their cards. We had more people buying because now there was bundles for them to buy. And so we saw an increase in profit, almost 45% increase in profit within the first three months. In retrospect, I see how monitoring a product really, really is helpful because we're able to monitor to see the effectiveness of the platform that had just been created. We're able to see the challenges we're having and we're able to fix it on time. Thank you. You get it? Okay. If you don't get it, forget about it. Number two, less repetitions. Another mistake a lot of people make in interviews is using the same example multiple times to answer different questions. Before the interview, take your time to go over a list of possible interview questions and then make a list of scenarios from different experiences that you can use to answer those questions. Be prepared with different scenarios so that you can show that you are the right fit for the job. For instance, if asked, tell us about a time you had to work with a difficult team member and how did you handle it? Or tell us about a time you were behind on a deadline and how did you handle it? If you haven't planned different scenarios, you'll find yourself reaching the same example 
to answer this question. While repetition is not a total deal breaker, it presents you as having very limited experience. Number three, be prepared. Another mistake you lots of us make is not doing enough research. When we apply for a job, most of the time, the research that we do is just to go to the company's website and do a quick read up. However, we could achieve more using the CREW technique. CREW stands for competitors, reviews, employees, and websites. When you enter an interview armed with information from these four sources, you are sure to know a lot more about the company. Use websites like Glassdoor to get reviews about the company. Do a research about competitors and find out how the company you are applying to matches up. You should also reach out to current or past employees of the company if you can. Various social networks such as LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook and the likes. And you can dive into them to reach out to people. This is a good time to slide into DMs. Do whatever it takes to figure out what it's like working in that company and what the interview process is. Number four, be flexible. Being too rigid is another mistake a lot of people make. When interviewers are looking for candidates, they value flexibility. They would normally want an individual that will go all in, all out, and all the way or at least an individual that is willing to give it all it takes. So let them see that you are flexible and you are open to changes, challenges, and you are willing to do your best. Don't be too rigid. Number five, remember to breathe. In the competitive world of job interviews, it's natural to feel a little nervous. But remember, staying calm and composed can make all the difference. An interview is just a conversation and should be treated as such. It's important to speak confidently and calmly. Let your words flow naturally and remember to smile. When faced with a tough question, take a moment to gather your thoughts. It's okay to spend some time thinking about your response and when you are ready, use the star strategy to respond confidently. Observe the interviewer's body language and listen to what is most important to them. Pause if needed and remember that you are being interviewed because they need someone with your skills. It's not an interrogation, it's a conversation. So take a deep breath, trust in your abilities, sit up and speak confidently. Number six, leave an impression. Now the interview is over. What next? Send a follow-up email. Not only is it a polite gesture, it could also increase your chances of getting hired. It shows your interest in the position and your professionalism. You should send that follow-up email within 48 hours after your interview to show your interest and enthusiasm for the position. The sooner, the better. In your follow-up email, you should Thank the interviewer for their time. Explain that this is just a follow-up email. Mention your job title and possibly when you were interviewed. Express your interest in the position and highlight what makes you unique. Ask any remaining question you may have. And then you can also assure the interviewer that you can answer any question they might have about your qualifications. Close by telling them that you look forward to hearing from them. Now here's a sample email that you could adapt to use. Number seven, don't beat yourself up. On average, an interviewer interviews at least four people for a single position. In many cases, they might end up interviewing as many as 10 to 20 people for one position. What this means is that on average, you have a chance of succeeding only 25% of the time or maybe 10 or 5% of the time. You would observe that the chances of failure is way higher than the success rate in the interviews. When we take the interviews to heart and beat ourselves up over 
at performance. We are not being fair on ourselves. If you've given it your best and you're still wearing cold, just remember that because you're wearing picked doesn't mean you aren't good for the job or you aren't qualified or skilled enough. There would be other factors, a lot of which would be beyond your control. So look on the positive side. You attended the interview, you gained some valuable insight into how the interview process works, you found out what is working and what is not, you know what examples are clicking with interviewers, and you are better prepared for the next interview. So there you have it. Seven mistakes to avoid in your job interview. What other mistakes do people make during interviews? Kindly let me know in the comment section below. If you can relate with any of the mistakes that I mentioned in this video, kindly also comment as well. And if you have found the information here useful, kindly consider subscribing, share, like this video. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.